In this video, we are going to take a design that was created in CorelDRAW and save it as a um, vector file for our roll and cutter and also take this Corel file, save it as a TIFF file for the IDS software. What we're doing is we are creating an applique embroidery design and we are going to use our cutter to cut the twill and then use our digitizing software to actually create the embroidery applique. So first things first, we've created this in CorelDRAW. Now if you use Illustrator, um, you can use a similar technique. Um, actually, we want, to, we want to save it as the same type of files. You just might have to go through different steps in applying it to Illustrator. So the first thing is, is that we want this file, we want the vectors for the cut file. And Roll and Cut Studio will take uh, EPS files as well as Illustrator files. The only thing with the Illustrator file is that you must save it as a legacy format in version 8. So with that in mind, uh, if you are using Illustrator, you want to go to File and Save. With the EPS file within CorelDRAW, um, we want to go to Export. Another thing, just kind of a side note, um, when we do use the Export in CorelDRAW, it will allow us turn, to turn our text into curves, which is what we need for the Roll and Cut Studio. If you're using Illustrator, you'll want to create the outlines for the text so that it will read the uh, vector lines to cut. So with this word already put in there, we are going to first create the uh, EPS file for the Roll and Cut Studio. So we'll scroll down to Export, and when we choose Export, we're going to export it to the desktop, and in here, we are just going to go ahead and name this Applique. When we name it Applique under the file uh, type or the Save As type, we want to use the drop down arrow and I want to choose the encapsulated postscript, left click, and then hit export. The next box is going to give us the option if we want to export the text as curves. You want to make sure that is selected, um, that it is a 96 dpi, um, because that will give us a true size and then the curves will give us those vector lines. So we'll go ahead and press OK and it has saved it to our desktop as an EPS file. We need to save another file format. We need to save it as a TIFF file. With the TIFF file it will allow us to bring it into IDS as the exact size of the cut file so we can make sure things are matched up properly. So we'll go to File and Export again and instead of EPS we are going to scroll down and choose the TIFF file format. We're going to save it to the desktop here as well and we're just going to name that Applique and then we're going to hit Export. Now when we hit Export a new dialog box will come up. We want to make sure the anti-alias option is off as well as the transparent background. You want to make sure those are off because uh, the transparent background will actually show up black when we bring in the design. Um, the anti-aliasing we want off because we don't want any extra colors in there. Um, we'll go ahead and press OK. You can see the width and the height of the design, uh, 2.75 by 16, and we'll go ahead and press OK. So we've got two file formats here. We've got a TIFF file that's for our IDS digitizing software and then we've got the EPS file which is for our Roland software. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the Cut Studio and we will go to File and then Import. There's also a little Import button up at the top here. I am in the desktop and you can see that EPS file. The files of type, if you don't have EPS selected, uh, it might not show you that EPS file. So you want to make sure that you use the file types AI and EPS. We're going to choose Applicate EPS and go ahead and press Open. When we press Open, there is our design. You can see in the bottom right hand side, there's the size 2.75 by 16, which is the size that was in our Corel Draw. Now we will go to the IDS. And in the IDS, we will go to Create 
and then insert image. In the insert image, there's our applique, and we'll go ahead and press OK to bring it in. We'll bring it in a simple artwork, and then press OK again. Now when it brings it in, I am in millimeters. I will change to uh, inches so we can see actually how big this is, but this is the same size um, in comparison. So we'll go ahead and press OK. And what the program has done is actually traced it for us. So we're gonna go we're gonna hit the go button, and when we hit the go button, it puts in fill stitches for us. Let's go ahead and zoom the whole design. And while we're at it, we'll go to our view preferences, change that to inches press OK, and when we look in the inches, it's 16 by 2.77, which um, has to do with the white background as well. So we will take the black color chip, left click on it, and when we left click, we're selecting those letters to turn to applique. We can come down to our stitch type, turn the stitch type to applique, and when we change it to applique, it will do our placement stitch, tack down stitch and cover stitch for each one of the letters. Now this will be the exact same size as our cut file so we want to make sure not to change the size and we want to make sure um, you know that we have the settings we want. If you do want to change the settings as far as the stitching goes you can certainly do that by selecting the areas and I just left clicked on that black color chip. Go to my stitch properties go to my applique tab and change anything that I want. Um, maybe I want to bring that down in width and maybe bring that down in offset as well. So I'll go ahead and press OK. I'll regenerate my stitches and as I regenerate you can see that change. Uh, I've got a little bit more um, or I'm sorry, a little bit more of the satin stitch on the outline. Um, of course here I have a little bit of a problem. I can always fix that by going in and going into my edit mode and let's make sure that we don't go too far away from what that area actually is. So we'll go ahead and generate our stitches and, uh, and we can further change that if we want. This is a bit of a thick stitch um, and there's more editing we can do. You can see that in our other videos. But there's our applique design. So when you are taking it from Corel and you want to take that from Corel to Roland, you would save that as an EPS. Or if you want to take it from Illustrator to Roland, you would save it as an AI version 8 or an EPS. When you want to take that to the IDS, you want to save it as a TIFF file with the anti-alias off. Make sure that anti-alias is off, that's a big thing, as well as the transparent background. We do not want a transparent background. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please watch our other videos, and have a great day.